Good morning. I see the rain didn't stop you from coming today. If you're online, we're not hating on you. We're just so we're so grateful that those that got through the rain and all the accidents to get here. I had one of the brothers say they he he ran into nine accidents trying to get here today. We Californians don't know how to handle just a little bit of rain. We oh my gosh, the sky's falling, right? But we're so glad that you're here today and today prepares you for tomorrow and your future that means if you don't like the way your life is today I have good news for you you don't need to continue doing what you've been doing you can change you can change your investment and then you can change your outcome life is not an accident it's reaping sowing and what reaping it's what you put in it's what you're going to get out we're going we're gonna to get ready for 20, we're going to finish this year very strong, and then we're going to go into 2023 stronger. How many believe that next year will be better than this year? I really, why? Because God, you, we should be growing. Someone say growing. growing. We should be more effective this year, ne next year than we were this year. Amen. Growth is in our future. God has called us and commanded us to be fruitful and multiply. We'll reach more souls next year than we did this year. We'll baptize more people next year than we did this year. We'll plant more churches. Come on, next year than we did this year. Some of the people that are going to get saved are in your own family, and they're going to get saved. I really believe this. Some of them before the, end, uh, before the end of the year. God says, I'm not done yet. How many believe that? God's not done yet. Just keep, on, keep the faith going. As we're celebrating Christmas, there's some things that are going to happen. I just want to make sure we're prepared for it. Uh, on Christmas Eve, uh, we're going to have a service. Our Sunday morning service will be on Christmas Eve. Our Sunday morning services will be on Christmas Eve. That means on Saturday, we'll be here at our 9 and 11 service. It's really important that we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Be careful that Sunday morning, I mean Saturday morning doesn't turn into last minute shopping you could do that after church but make sure on christmas come on we're celebrating christmas let's celebrate big in the house of the lord on saturday and sunday i mean saturday and Sunday. so what's gonna happen on sunday sunday this is this is this is what we're gonna do we're gonna end the the, the word that god gave us his presence everywhere strong in our homes now this is what's gonna happen you, on Sunday morning, maybe even before you open the presents, whatever you do, maybe after you open the presents, I don't know how you're going to do it. But we're going to have a live broadcast into your home. What's really important is for you to bring all your family around that TV or whatever instrument you're going to use. And let them hear the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're believing that salvation is going to visit your home breakthrough is going to visit your home come on eternal life is going to come not jesus is going to come knocking the message is going to be unbelievable it's going to be great me and my family are going to actually uh, preach the message some of my daughters are going to get involved with it lisa it's going to be a message you do not want to it's it's not going to be boring i guarantee you tune in it's going to grab people's attention but just give god around 35 minutes of your time put your family in front of the tv and celebrate christmas the way it should be celebrated our savior has been born i mean come, that's what it's about so that's what we're going to be doing and then next week we have our big christmas giveaway we're going to give away thousands of gifts, of to I mean, to toys to needy families. We're going to need your help on this. This is what we need you to do. We need to make sure every single one of you do your part to um, register some children. Me and my family, me and Lisa actually tomorrow, um, Monday, is usually our date day. So I'm going to start my date hitting an apartment complex in our neighborhood. And I'm going to hit me and Lisa are going to knock on some doors and we're going to sign up little boys and little girls. And we're going to make sure that they have presents for Christmas. We're going to invite them to church. And also we're going to have this year, we're going to have 2000 boxes of food that we're going to be giving out. And, and the, the, you know, so it's going to be really good food. So they we're, they're going to come, they're going to get the food, they're going to get the food, they're going to get toys, but most of all, they're going to get a presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ and they're going to get an opportunity to be saved and receive the gift of eternal life. So that's going to be next week. This is what we do. Volunteer. Say it with me. Volunteer. Volunteer. Right now, we're partnering up. This year, the first year, we got a, one of the biggest food distributors 
in, in the United States is partnering up with us. They're providing the 2,000 boxes of food. They're getting the food from Sam's Club, Walmart, Costco, all those areas. They're getting the food. They're going to bring it here, and they're going to send 50 volunteers, too, from their company. We're going to volunteer. How many believe this is something big? God's ready to do something really big. So we're going to end this year end this year strong. And today, we're going to bring a breakthrough offering. And God only knows the breakthrough that you need in 2023. You don't. You, we didn't even know COVID was going to hit us in 2019. But God did. Whatever you need in 2023, God is preparing you right now. What we're given today is not for today. What we're given to today is for tomorrow. It's for next year. But I guarantee you this, whatever the Lord leads you to give, he has a breakthrough in the mind that you're going to need. God doesn't need, come on, God doesn't need, this is what he doesn't need. He doesn't need our finances, but what he does need is our faith. Right? And he needs a seed. Come on. God's ready to do something. He knows what we need. So let's pray. Let's pray. And then we're going to get into the word right now. And we're going to cover two principles that we started last week talking about that lead to breakthrough. Guaranteed breakthrough. And also release of God's prosperity in our lives. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time we have together on this Sunday morning. All we have is like three Sundays or two Sundays left. That's it in 2022. And we're so grateful that we're here today. Those are online tuning in. We thank you. We thank you for all our campuses, the Arrowhead campus, the Pomona campus, the Arizona campus, the L.A. campus, the Kenya campus, Father, the, the, the T, to, Tawana campus, Father. We just, even in Oregon, our sister church over there, we just thank you, Lord, that right now you're speaking to us. And where you're leading us is into a place of victory, breakthrough, new beginnings, and more than we've ever seen. We just thank you, Lord. Speak to us today. And I ask you, Lord, speak through me today. That the words that I speak may come directly from you. Use me, Lord, to teach your word. We're ready to receive and hear your word and apply it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go ahead. You could get your notebooks out and, and pens. And, and let's take some notes. And we always listen to the word of God to learn and apply. Say with me. Learn and apply. So today we're going to be covering two principles that lead to guaranteed breakthrough and abundance. But before we do that, I want to dive into some definitions. The key definitions that we want to, three words I want to cover with you. Principle. Principle. It's a spiritual law, truth, a command, a rule of conduct, prescript, or, or the word pre means before or script written. That means that God has already put into action laws and truths that if we obey them and if we follow them, they'll work for us. If we push against them, they'll work against us. An example of that, I'm going to give you an example in Scripture, is the principle or the law of sowing and reaping. You cannot change that no matter how much you try. In Galatians 6-7, it says, do not deceive yourselves. Why does the scripture say do not deceive yourselves? Because we're pretty good at deceiving ourselves. We're pretty good at selling ourselves on a bad idea, thinking we're going to have a great outcome. Be careful that you don't deceive yourself. No one makes a fool of God. That means I've already put the principles in motion. The laws are in place. Don't think you're going to make a fool of God. Do it your way and still expect to get the right return. You will reap exactly what you plant. That's a principle. We will reap, say with me, we will reap exactly what we plant. Does that make sense to you? We not only sow, of course, farmers sow seed. And, and this is a very simple process, and I don't think and it's scientific. If you sow apple seeds, you'll get an apple tree that produces apples. If you sow watermelon seed, you'll produce uh, vines that produce watermelon. Watermelon seeds produce watermelon. If you sow seeds of anger, you'll reap a harvest of anger. If you sow seeds of love, you'll reap a harvest of love. We as a church, we are one, one planting or, or season away from having no harvest. 
if we ever got to the point that we no longer preached the Bible and we no longer gave food to the hungry and we shut down our men's homes, our women's homes, and we stopped planting seed, it would be a short period of time that we would survive. Eventually, the church would die, not because they're not, there's no future harvest. It's because we stop planting seed. What keeps our church going, what keeps the farmer expecting a harvest is that he keeps planting seed. And if you keep planting seed, you'll continue getting a harvest. How many of that's a good idea? I mean, come on, it's a good principle. It's not luck. I wrote down this, God's principles take the guesswork out of life. God's principles take the guesswork out of life. Life is not luck. It's principles that we practice. And if we sow, we will reap exactly what we've sowed. So principles is spiritual truth or law. Breakthrough. How many would like to get some breakthrough? It's, it, this is what it means. Any significant or sudden advance development, achievement, or increase. It also means the removal of all, of all barriers to progress. Is there an area that you've been expecting progress, but it seems like there's an invisible barrier? I just can't get there. It seems like there's an invisible barrier in our, in our finances, an invisible barrier in my emotions, an invisible barrier in my, in my, in my relationships. There's something there that I'm pushing that's resistant against me, and it seems like I've been stuck here at the same exact place for a year, two years, three years, four years, but there's principles that we could practice that cause supernatural breakthrough. Now, if we practice these principles, we're not deceiving ourselves. We could expect, uh, we could expect a breakthrough. If we don't practice the principles, we are deceiving ourselves. Could it be that we're praying for something that we should be practicing? God, God, give me that breakthrough. God says, I've already given you my word. Practice my word. Practice the principle. It will lead to your breakthrough. It also means abundance. I mean, the other word I want to cover is abundance. Extremely plentiful. It means an, an oversufficient quantity or supply. It means overflowing, fullness, affluence. This year will be the, one of the first years that we didn't buy the food. I said, why would, we all, why would we all of a sudden, which is a breakthrough, get a breakthrough in food? I'll tell you why. Because we've been given buying food for 18 years. So God says, now we're gonna, you're going to get a harvest of food. Now, this... This company that's one of the biggest food distributors, they, they give food to Sam's Club, Walmart. Now, what they're going to do is partner up with the Wear World Outreach. We're the only church they've ever partnered up with. Why is that happening? Because we've been a church that's been planting millions of pounds of food that we bought for 18 years. And God says, get ready for an overflow, an abundance. And this is what they said. We're going to give you the 2,000 boxes and we want to partner with you all year long. They're going to get their trucks. Come on, they're... they're, they're 18 wheelers and bring them into the Waverly Lowry's so we can feed the hungry all year long. What it is, it's a supernatural breakthrough of abundance. It's not accident. Now, under, under, that, that harvest is available to anybody that sows that way. There's other churches that would love to have a harvest like that, but it's impossible to get a harvest if you're not sowing seed. You get this? This year... This year, some, something amazing has happened this year too. We're going to give out, right now we got 10,000 gifts that are coming from Arizona. This is the first year, uh, we might still go to L.A. and get some gifts, but this is the first year, every year we as a team go to L.A. and we buy thousands of gifts. This year, when we got the Arizona campus, we didn't know this, but the Arizona campus is the distributor for Toys for Tots for the whole Arizona and southern parts of the United States. So there's a warehouse full of toys, and this year we're reaping a harvest of food, a harvest of toys, and God is saying, get ready for a great harvest of abundance in your personal lives. Come on, give God some praise. These are just, you sow, you reap. Is that good? Well, these are two principles that lead to breakthrough and abundance. Principle number one, obey the voice and commands of God 
and abundantly prosper. This is a principle. Obey the voice and commands of God and abundantly prosper. Well, how do we get that? Where do we get that principle? Deuteronomy 38, 9. Remember, I will never tell you something without giving you a scripture. Don't fight the scripture. Believe the scripture. Resist your doubt. Don't resist scripture. Believe it. Deuteronomy 30, verse 8 and 9 says, And you shall again listen to and obey the voice of the Lord. You shall obey, listen and obey. Say it with me. Listen and we don't listen to listen. We don't listen just to learn. We listen to learn and obey. We are here to make adjustments in our lives. We're not here to do the same exact things that we've been doing, expecting different results. No, I want to start getting breakthrough results. I want to start tapping into the abundance of the Lord. It's going to take some discipline. It's going to take some obedience. It's going to take some learning. It's going to take some growing. I am here in school. I'm here to learn the principles of God so I can start getting the results of God. Is there anyone here that wants to get the results of God? God says, I'm giving you my voice. I'm giving you my commands for you to obey them. Look what it says. And obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commands. Do all his, which I command you today. It says, it says it twice. Obey and do. It's the same exact thing. Then, then, then the Lord your God shall make you abundantly prosperous in everything that you do. God is saying, I'm giving you my commands. I'm leading you by my voice because I want to lead you to prosperous prosperity. And I want to lead you to abundance. But I need you to do, just follow my instructions, obey my commands. Then, then what? Then God shall make you abundantly prosperous in everything you do. This is what's happening. In the offspring of your body and in the offspring of your cattle and in the produce of your land. For the Lord will again delight over you for good just as he delighted over your fathers. What he's saying is, what I did for them in scripture, I'll do for you. These principles work for anyone. I, this, is, this is what I, I believe God's word, but I also fear God. Does anybody fear God? What I mean by that is I fear God in this, I respect his word. And I believe this, if I do what he tells me to do, I'll get the results I've always wanted. If I don't do what he tells me to do, I know this, it's not going to work out. So he's given me his word and he says, if you do what I'm telling you, then you will abundantly prosper. Isn't that great principle? Principle number two, give and you will receive. Say it with me, give and you'll receive. Now Jesus said this principle, um, Luke 6, 38, give and you will receive. It will be given to you. He says it again. Give and you will. Say it with me. Will. will. Say it with me. Will. will. Do you see the guarantee in this scripture? It doesn't say you might receive. You'll be lucky if you receive. Um, if, you, if you play the right numbers, you might win. I want you to make sure that you have more faith in the Bible than you do in the lotto ticket. Some people have more faith in a lotto ticket or the casino than they do in the word. God says, stop gambling with your future and start practicing the principles that produce my abundance. If you give, you will, you will receive. Look what it says. Um, you, will re, you will be given much, a good measure, pressed down, compacted, shaken together and running over. It will spill into your lap. The image is, is of grain overflowing in its containers. The way you give, the standard measure you use with others is the way God will give to the standard measure God will use with you. Now, this is the, this is the promise. If you give, you will receive. And there's a second promise. If you give, you'll receive more than you gave. You're not going to receive what you gave. You're going to receive a harvest what you gave. God is saying, if you give, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to get more to you. This is what I want you to do. I want you to plant seed because I'm trying to get a harvest to you. 
There's no other way to get a harvest to you without planting seeds. If we don't go out there on the streets and share the good news of Jesus Christ, there will never be a harvest of souls. We have to go out there, preach the gospel. We have to go out there and feed the hungry. We're knocking on doors of prisons. Come on, we're going to other cities and it's open up churches. We're going to orphans in Kenya and feeding the orphans and building schools. Why are we doing all of this? Because if we plant seeds, there will be a harvest. We're not planting seeds and not expecting something. We're planting seeds and we're expecting big breakthrough. We're not expecting to receive what we planted. We're expecting to receive more than we planted. Do all these, does this, the adjectives that are being used, are those adjectives sound like abundance? Compacted, more. Yesterday, we have an orange tree in our front yard. It's my first year in that house and that orange tree provided, I keep looking at the orange tree and it has a whole bunch of oranges on it. And I go, who's going to harvest it? <laughs> I mean, they're just hanging from this tree. And in the harvesting, I don't know if you've ever tried to harvest an orange or lemon tree. They got thorns in it too. So who's going to harvest it? So I keep telling my kids, someone needs to harvest that tree. I keep saying someone needs to harvest. We got a harvest of oranges. And we got so many oranges, we can't consume it ourselves. It's an overflow. So to, this is what I did yesterday. No one's harvesting. And I knew that that would be just a wrong principle. To have a harvest and not get it. To, that there's souls out there we're supposed to reach. And we not do everything we can to get through the storms and the difficulties. Get to put some labor in. For me not to go in the streets and sign up some families and do my part would be a shame. So I harvested it yesterday and I found a container and I, I, I just one container. I'm going to fill this container up, but this is what I did. I, I harvested and I harvested as much as I could. It got real super heavy and it started overflowing and it started falling on the ground and I'm not picking them up even. It's an overflow so much. I can't contain it. So I bring it in and Lisa goes, wow. All that came from one tree, and I go, we're not even done yet. So this morning when I woke up, there was like 12 bags full of oranges. So Lisa must be right now ready to overflow. Because I, this is what we're learning, that God didn't just give us enough for our family. He gave us some overflow. And what God is saying, the same way you harvested that tree, I'm ready to do a harvest like that in your life. That you won't have enough to contain it or consume it. You're going to have to give it to somebody else. Come on, how many are expecting something like that? And how we do is, how we do this is practice the principles. So let's look at a story that puts these two principles into action. And, and this story has some life lessons that it could teach us. Look at 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. Now Elijah, who was from Tishbe and Gilead, in Gilead, told King Ahab, As surely as the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give a word. Now this doesn't sound very positive. But there's a le life lesson here. Obedience to God's voice causes rain. How convenient today that we have a lot of rain. You guys get this. And abundance. And disobedience causes drought and lack. The rain represents the blessing and favor of God over our lives and our families. A drought or a bad economy, high inflation, limited resources does not affect our prosperity as believers because our source of prosperity and abundance is our obedience to God. Our source of prosperity and abundance is our obedience. Say it with me. Our obedience to God. It's not the economy. This is going to build someone else's, someone's faith in this room. You've been looking at the news. You've been looking at the economy. You've been looking at the stock market. And it's messing up your faith. And God says, stop putting your faith in the, in the economy. Stop putting your faith in the president. Stop putting your faith in government. Stop putting your faith in what YouTube is saying, CNN, Fox News. Put your faith in my word. Your economy is not based on this world's economy. Your economy is based on your obedience to my word. And if you obey my word, you'll have rain. Now you might be thinking, man, that's mean, Elijah. You're saying it's not going to rain. And, and 
it's not mean. Well, this is what happened. King Ahab was the king of Israel over God's people. And what he did, as soon as he became king, he did something very offensive. He started building altars to Baal and false gods and really was commanding the people to worship those false gods instead of worshiping the true God of Israel. The Bible says the anger of the Lord raised up against him and that this was the consequence. God says, now there'll be no rain. There's a principle. Obedience causes rain. Disobedience causes drought. Could there be a spiritual drought in your life of joy, peace, vision, breakthrough, healing, supernatural power? And you're saying, when is it going to start raining? But maybe it's never going to start raining until you repent of your sins. That's causing the drought. Obedience causes rain and blessing. Disobedience causes drought. In 1 Kings 8.35, look what it says. If the skies are shut up and there is no rain because your people have sinned against you, and if they pray toward this temple and acknowledge your name and turn from their sins because you have punished them, with every law, there's a blessing and there's a curse. There's no principle of God that just has a blessing attached to it. The principles of God, if you obey them, they release a blessing upon your life. Disobedience to a principle of God doesn't leave you in a neutral category. It puts you in a place Either you're under a blessing or you're under a curse. So why would God do that? Because God chastises those he loves. He's already set it up. These principles work for you or against you. So why would they work against you? This is why. Maybe the suffering and the drought will cause us to realize we've gone our own way. It's not working out. Something has to change. And this is what the scripture is saying, that the suffering and the pain of their sin would cause them to call on the name of the Lord one more time. And he says, if they would turn from their sins, this is what I will do. I will send rain and blessing upon their lives again. The good news is we don't need to stay in the drought. Amen? I love this. It's all principles. So that's why they had a drought. So let's keep going with this story. So now um, a, a Elijah speaks to the king. He says, it's going to be a drought. And it's not going to rain again until I say so. But right now, there's no more rain. That meant famine was coming. Lack was coming. Life lesson number two. Let's get it right here. It says, this is, this is the life lesson number two. The pattern for getting a breakthrough is simple. The Lord says, and we do it. The pattern for getting a breakthrough is simple. The Lord says, and we do it. Look at 1 Kings 17 too. Now, Elijah would go through the same exact drought season as everyone else, but he would not have lack. He would have provision, and his provision would be in the instruction that God gave him. Look at this verse. And 1 Kings 17 too. Then the Lord said, say with me. Then the Lord said to Elijah. Let's say it again. Then the Lord said to Elijah. This is what he said. Go to the east and hide by Kareth Brook near where, I, near, near where it enters the Jordan River. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you. For I have commanded them or the ravens to bring you food. Look at this. So Elijah did as the Lord told him. And camp beside Kareth Brook, east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread and meat each morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. Look at this. There's a, there's a drought, no doubt about it. But God knows where there's one brook that still has water. And well, God said, I'm going to give you instructions. So you, there's going to be a drought. There'll be no rain, but you'll have water. And then what I'm going to do is instruct some birds, ravens. I'm going to instruct them to go get food and bring it to you at that location. Now, if Elijah chooses not to obey God and do his thing, not, this is the truth, there is provision and there is water in the structures of the Lord. All Elijah has to do is simple, hear the word and do it. Someone say, hear the word and... I remember one time in my life that 
I was, and this is right before I met Lisa, I was, I had a girlfriend and I'm not going to say her name. She might be listening. <laughs> and we were, we were planning to get married. We're even looking at, at, at books and wedding dresses, all that. And I remember one day the Lord said to me, the voice of the Lord said to me, she's not your wife. I go, what do you mean she's not my wife? She's like perfect. She looks good. She goes to church. I goes, I know, but she's not your wife. And when I heard that, it broke my heart because I wanted her to be my wife. And God, she's not the one. The only thing I could do is God's leading you to, me to prosperity. He's leading me to the right brook. That wasn't it. This is what I did. I heard the voice of the Lord. And God says, don't, it's done. Break up with her. I did it. And this is what I, when I did it, I cried. But this is the truth. God had my wife. She was coming. And there would be a Bible study that I would meet my wife. And I met Lisa, not so much, I mean, Lisa became my girlfriend, not so, maybe a few months after that. And God was saying, if you just listen to my voice, I would lead you to my destiny. I would lead you to, come on, I'll lead you to the well. I'll lead you to the brook and I'll provide for you. Now there's a lesson. And this is what I would say. Be careful that the ravens or the birds don't obey God better than you do. All the ravens had to do was do this. Go to this place. I don't even know where they got their food from. Somebody had food. Maybe there was a king that had a whole bunch of, he had, maybe he had, he had food. And this raven would come every day and just take a chicken wing <laughs> or a whole chicken. And the ravens would come and just bring, as, as Elijah were, was in the place, God told him, the provision was there. If you'll just obey God's word, don't figure out, you don't have to figure out how to do everything. You just have to do this. The pattern is simple. The Lord says, I do. Say it with me. The Lord says, the Lord says, that's it. And if you do what the Lord says, you'll, you'll tap into the supernatural provision of the Lord. I remember one time when I was, uh, me and Lisa got married and, and I know I was supposed to marry Lisa, but this was a problem. When, right the Probably two weeks before I married Lisa, I got fired from my job. I was working at Bank of America. I was the worst teller in the United States of America. <laughs> like, that was not my gift. I, 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 am not, I would never be a good accountant. I, was just, I wasn't good at that. Uh, I, mean, every, I mean, every day you're supposed to balance your, your money at the end of the day, and I could never balance. I tried, because you used to have to do it manually. It wasn't computers. You do it manually on a piece of paper. And by the time I'd done, I had an extra thousand in my uh, account or an extra thousand missing. It was just a mess. I'd have people come back in line and say, oh, you gave me an extra 200. I go, give me that. I mean, it, you want to be in my line? Maybe, maybe not. It was like gambling. You might win, you might lose. I don't know. Finally, the, the week before, before um, we got married, the, the, the bank manager and everybody called me in after work, and I already knew they're going to fire me. I have to be the worst teller in America. And when they called that meeting, I, you know, I just did this. I go, you know, I'm, I'm glad you guys called this meeting. I just want to let you know today's my last day. <laughs> I saw the writing on the wall. They're going to fire me. I quit. <laughs> and they go, oh, 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 okay, just sign right here. But now I'm going to my marriage day, and I, now we're getting married, and I don't have a job, but I'm married. And I remember when I came back, I, I got a job at a warehouse, um, but the only problem, I'm allergic to dust. And we're, we're like working all these boxes, and I'm sneezing the whole shit. Achoo, 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 achoo. My eyes are swollen, and I, and I, and I go, God, is this my lot in life? I'll do whatever you ask me to do. I'll suffer in your name. But I heard the Holy Spirit said, no, 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 no. There's another opportunity. A year ago, remember you were at a dealership? I go, why don't you, I heard the Holy Spirit say, go to that dealership and there's a job waiting for you. This is really important. If you could get to the point that you hear God's voice and just do it, 
This is what I guarantee you. You'll always see the abundance. You'll always see breakthrough. You'll always see growth. You'll always see increase in your life. I went there and it turned into a 14-year career that God fed my family and took care of them. That was the brook that God took my family, come and took care of my family. I was married to the wife God wanted me to be married to. I was at the job God called me to be married, come on, to, to work at. It was blessed until God says, that brook is dried up. Now leave the career and become a pastor the way we're allowed. You're like, what? Oh, Lord. No, let's not do that. Someone say, trust the Lord. The pattern for getting a breakthrough is simple. Just the Lord says it and we what? Do it. Life lesson number three. The provision isn't just for you. And we learned this lesson from the bird. So God took the bird to provision. As long as the bird was following instructions, he was eaten. But God instructed the bird. Say it with me. God instructed the bird. Interesting that God gave instructions to the bird. He says, I'm going to lead you to provision, but the provision is not just for you. It's for Elijah. And as long as this bird goes to the provision and brings the provision. See, God was not just leading the bird to provision. He was leading the bird to feed someone else. Look at the scripture in 2 Corinthians 9.11. It says this, you will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way. You'll be enriched in every way to be, how many want to be enriched in every way? It's not just talking about financial enrichment. It's talking about wisdom. It's talking about healing. It's talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. It's talking about vision. It's talking about family life. It's talking about relationships. This is what God is saying. I want to enrich you. I, I'm the rich one. And I want to give you my riches so that you can be generous with the riches I gave you. I want you to be generous with the riches I what? That's what this church is all about. That's what God is all about. He enriches us so that we can be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. So the, the lesson number three is the provision isn't just for you or it isn't just for us. God enriches us. The bird gets food, but not just for him. He gave him food to eat, but he also gave him food to feed. He gave him food to eat and he also gave him food to what? Be careful that when God enriches you, you just don't consume all of it. Just because you got a raise at your job doesn't mean that you need to now consume the rest of your debt, uh, that, that gap there between what you make now and what you're going to make and use that gap to fill it with things. Don't just be a consumer, be a farmer. God wants to entrust you with more. Of course he does. But he said, how well will you use the blessings of the enrichment that I give you in life? Of course you can consume some of it, but make sure you understand the provision isn't just for you. You got that? Life lesson number four. If we continue to obey, we will continue to experience a supernatural breakthrough, breakthroughs of God's provision and abundance. Now this is what happened. Elijah was at that brook, but then one day, the brook dried up. Say it with me. One day the brook dried up. One day the brook. And this is what happens when the brook dried up. God also commanded the raven, don't go back to that brook anymore. Be careful that you're not trying to use an old method in a new season. That you're trusting more in a method than trusting in the Lord's instruction. What worked yesterday doesn't mean it's going to work today. That's why we, God gives us daily bread, daily instruction. And God began to tell, Elijah start, started seeing the brook dry up. He goes, don't worry about it. I got a new place of provision for you. And come on. Don't worry about it. I got, come on, I already know how it's all going to work. But God leads us to new provision, new breakthrough, new growth with new instruction. With what? Come on, you're learning something right now. New provision, new breakthrough, new levels come first with new instructions. It's the same principle. It's the same pattern. I give you the instructions. You obey the instructions and you'll see breakthrough and you'll see provision, but might not be the same way I did it before. So this is what he tells Elijah. Elijah, look at this. Well, while the book dried up, verse, 1 Kings 17, 7. But after a while, the brook dried up, for there was no rain fall anywhere in the land. 
Then the Lord says, say with me, then the Lord. You have to know what the Lord is saying in this season. What is he telling you? God's going to start downloading instructions for 2022, 2023, I'm sorry. Get ready to receive what God's ready to do in your life. Then the Lord said to Elijah, go and live in the, in the village of Zarephath near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zarephath. This is the pattern. The Lord said, so Elijah went. The Lord said, and Elijah now, what, what happened? God first instructed a bird to feed him. And now he's instructing a widow to feed him. Elijah has to obey and go to that city of Zarephath, just like he, like he had to go to the address of that brook. And then there was a lady now that God was going to use, the least likely person, a widow that had no source of income. Obviously, she had no husband that was bringing in the bacon. And she had a child. She was probably, she was really poor. And God says, I'm going to ask that poor lady to feed you. And I've already instructed her because in the instruction is provision for you. And in the instruction is provision for her. And if you guys just continue obeying the pattern, I say it, you do it. You'll tap into my supernatural breakthrough and my supernatural abundance. We're going to have to depend in 2023 on the instructions of the Lord. There's new levels. There's new growth. There's increase. Come on. Our church is going to grow greater. Your ministry, your business will grow even in a drought because God's instructions always work even in drought seasons. I love it. So this is what happened. In verse 10, as he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks and he asked her, would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was going to get it, he called to her, bring me a bite of bread too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God, I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks, is her vision, to cook the, this last meal, that's her vision. And then my son and I will die, that's her vision. But Elijah said, but Elijah said to her, don't be afraid, go ahead and do what you said, but make a little bread for me first. Understand, God doesn't need her bread. God needs her seed and her faith. God's ready to produce his provision and his abundance. All they need to do is follow the instructions. I know it's difficult, but you got to be careful that you don't allow your lack or your difficulty to determine your obedience. Don't look for your circumstance for proof of your, what you should be planting. Look at God's word for proof of what you should be planting because God already knows the harvest that he's trying to get to you. And he's saying, baby, I've instructed you to feed this guy. Don't act like you didn't hear me. Go ahead and give just a little bread to him first. You know what God is saying? Put me first. And if you put me first, I'll add everything to you. If you put me first, I what? So this is what happens. This is what happens. But I said to her, don't be afraid. But, and, and, and in verse 14, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, there will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops will grow again. You know what he said? The drought won't affect you, baby. You're going to be fine. You got my instructions and this is what I'm telling you. If you'll just give me the flour and the oil, make some bread and give it to the prophet or give it to the ministry, this is what I promise you. Your provision will always be here until the rain comes. You will not be affected by the drought. Your, your jar of oil and your jar of flour will never ever run dry because it's going to be connected to my provision, my economy. And what God is saying, no matter what season our world goes through, no matter no matter what season the United States goes through, my people will be taken care of because my instructions lead to my abundance. My instructions lead to my healing. My instructions lead to my protection. It's time for us to begin to just hear and obey. And if we hear and obey, we'll never have lack in our lives. I love it. So, the law was, so Elijah, so she did. So she did, as, as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat 
for many days. There was always enough flour and olive oil left in a container, just like, God, just like God said, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. Lesson number five, when we give what the Lord tells us to give, we'll receive more than we could ever imagine. When we give, now I, this is what I do know. We don't know the breakthrough that we need, but God knows. But God's saying the breakthrough that you think you need is not the breakthrough you actually need. You're going to need more than you think. She, just, she thought she was just going to get provision for herself during the drought. But God had thought something that she didn't know. Her son, a little while later, would all of a sudden die. And her son died and the prophet Elijah that she kept alive, she went to. She goes, I want you to get this. Her little flour and oil that she gave, the little bread that she gave, was not only going to sustain her through the drought, it was going to cause her child to resurrect from the dead. It was going to cause her children to be saved. God is saying there's something bigger than you could ever imagine tied to a breakthrough offering. We've never had a breakthrough offering that we call a breakthrough offering, but God is saying, just like the widow of Zarephath, I'm instructing you to give what I tell you to give, and if you'll give what I tell you to give, you're going to be prepared for every single season in your life, but it's not just going to affect you in the temporary. It's going to affect you for eternity. I will resurrect that boy. He died. But she had somebody to go to that was connected to God. And she said, Elijah, my son died. You know what Elijah did? He went to that little boy's room. He laid on him, breathed on him. And the Bible says that boy came back to life. She did not know that a little breakthrough offering was not only going to sustain her supernaturally through a drought season, that it would not affect her, but that little breakthrough offering. See, God was not trying to get something from her. He was trying to get something to her, and she was going to receive way more than she could imagine. Sometimes when we're given an offering like this, it's the little faith that we need to exercise so God can reach our drug addict kids. Come on, so God can reach our hard-headed husbands and wives. And God is saying, in this breakthrough offering, I'm going to cause, a, I'm going to cause revival in your family. How many believe that someone's going to get saved, maybe even this Christmas season, and we're just one breakthrough offering away? This is what we're going to do. These lessons are great. And I, I mean, you could kind of just go over them. These outlines, this outline is on your app. You could take a look at the outline. There's some, that, some things I covered I didn't. But there's some ser just simple, simple things that we could live by. Principles at work. When God says it, just do it. And if you do what it says, right, y'all also have rain, a favor and blessing over your life. And this is what God has guaranteed you. You'll always have breakthrough no matter where you're at. And not, not, not only breakthrough, the breakthrough will be bigger than you could ever imagine. One offering will continue giving and it could give for the rest of your life. Just keep on giving and giving and giving. This ministry, we're going to continue giving. And we're, we're believing that this next year, 2023, is going to be the biggest year for the Wayroll Outreach we've ever experienced. I would believe that. And for your life. But we know this, that it's impossible to have a harvest if there's no seed. Now, we never give out of pressure. We never give, we never give out of compulsion. This is not a sales pitch. But right now, God's given us an opportunity to plant seed for breakthrough for others and breakthrough for ourselves. What I want to do real quick, I want to show you a video and then we're going to give an offering. How many have the faith to give something today? Like, okay, I'm going to plant some seed. We're the widows of Zarephath at times, giving all we got. Me and Lisa, Last night we talked about it and, and I came up with a number and then Lisa came up with a higher number and I got to just go with her. I do the bill, so I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, she goes, that's the number I got. I go, I think I'm hearing from God. I don't know if you're hearing. But usually the higher number is usually from the Lord. I'm here saying that. I don't want to miss what God has for me. God knows what I'm going to need in 2023. So we're going to go ahead and go with Lisa today. But God will speak to us and we give what the Lord tells us to give. It might be a stretch. But I just want to show you a quick video and then we're going to do the offering. A quick video of, of some of the things that have happened in 2022. And it's all because of our giving. Take a look at it. so 
excited about what God has done in 2022. What we were able to do with your help and with God's help in 2022 was incredible. We started the year by marching in City Hall. We went to the community with our WOW Jam where we had hundreds of volunteers and thousands of people show up. We outreached to our community with 5,129 volunteers. We served 16,950 meals in 2022. We have homes that continue to transform lives. We served 179 men, women, and children who came through our homes. We built a church in Kenya, week by week, day by day, taking care of two orphanages with 93 children. We were able to do an outreach to the street children, and God was gracious enough to help us rescue nine street kids that today are in a home, in safe place, and actually are now going to school. You know, this year we've had an opportunity to minister to so many men. This year we had an opportunity to take just over 200 men to our local mountains for a men's advance weekend. We've seen an average of over 450 guys show up and worship God. We have gotten to witness over 34,000 teenagers hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. On average, we experience over 410 teenagers coming in through our doors. And I'll let you know, out of all of those numbers, over 1,500 of them have said yes to saying, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm committed to living for God as a teenager, even in 2022. We have discipled 4,154 souls in our Holy Warriors Growth Track. Not only that, we have seen 914 people get water baptized. They made a public declaration of their faith in Jesus Christ and their living for God. We also have 729 new family members at the Way World Outreach. This year, we've had 3,439 young adults attend our young adult services all over the world. And just alone this year, we've had 486 salvations. God is on the move and God is just getting started. had 6,749 people come to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Church, let's give God praise for all the souls that have made a decision to follow Jesus. We have had the privilege this year to serve thousands of kids. We have started 28 new DG groups this year. This year we have hundreds of salvation. We have had hundreds of families that we've been able to help through Kids World. It has been amazing. This year we had 1,267 first-time guests coming through our doors for an average of 106 first-time guests per month. What is ministry? Ministry is everything. Ministry is showing people the love of God. It's feeding the hungry and healing the broken. Through ministry, we can be more. More joyful, more kind, more loving. All by showing the love of Jesus.
In its simplest form, ministry is letting God's love shine. We are called to do God's work. This is our purpose, our calling, our time to show the world what God can do. a church for the broken, a church that lets God's love shine, a church that believes in miracles, a church of worship, a church that makes disciples, a church of healing, a church with the aim to share the gospel with the world. We are the Way World Outreach. Let's give the Lord a hand for what He's done. And let's all stand up. I, I just want, first of all, thank you for partnering up with the vision of the Lord. And, and I, I would say with me as well. It, it's one thing to get a vision from God, but there's a weight on it. And there's no vision that God gives any man or woman that they're supposed to do on their own. And this church is all of us. We're hearing from God. We're sacrificing. But what we're doing will last for eternity. This is all about souls for eternity. There's so much more to do in our lives, in our families. And this Christmas season, isn't it great that the first thing we're going to do, instead of giving a, getting a gift for ourselves, we're going to give a gift to the Lord. Isn't this the way it should be? And what I want you to do is take your offering, breakthrough offering. Let's, let's hold it up. If you, it, it might be your phone you're holding up, but um, either way. If you're giving on the phone, then you can still just come up here and just walk through here and walk the altars by faith and receive your breakthrough. Come on, just... Let's, let, we're going to just bring our offerings forward. You could put it in, you could put it in that box or put it in one of these little Christmas boxes here. Well, let's give a breakthrough offering like the lady, the lady of Zarephath that was instructed and she gave, her, she gave what God instructed her. That's all God is telling us to do. Give what I instruct you to give. And the breakthrough I've already saw. And it'll be bigger than you could ever imagine. God's trying to get something to us. And I really believe the most important thing is salvation for us and our families. Let's pray. Father, we lift up this breakthrough offering and we're so grateful that you've instructed us to give to the greatest cause in the world. And that soul is coming to know you as our Lord and Savior for eternity. Only what we invest in the kingdom of heaven and we invest in ministry will follow us for eternity. And I just thank you, Lord, this offering, we're giving it sacrificially. It's an act of faith, but also we're so grateful for the blessings that you've given us. We realize the blessings and you've enriched us. It's not just for us. We're supposed to pass it on to ladies in Africa, widows, orphans, children in our inner cities that are hurting and broken. We're supposed to pass it on to preach the gospel in inner cities across the United States of America give hope to the hopeless, set people free, make disciples of Jesus Christ. But I thank you as we're giving this offering. I thank you, Lord. It's a breakthrough offering. We're going to start seeing testimonies of sudden breakthrough, sudden development, sudden increase, a removal of, Father, the resistance of the enemy. We just thank you, Lord. That's happening right now. And also a release of your abundance so we can enrich others as you've enriched us. So we give this by faith, in gratitude, and cheerfully. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go ahead and you can bring your offerings right up here. And, and the worship team will sing a song. And as after you bring it, um, we are dismissing. But Wednesday night we do have service as well. It's going to be awesome. Let's end this year strong. December 18th next week. You do not want to miss it. Let's come every single service, every single Sunday. Thank you guys so much. Just come this way. Once you come up here, we're released. God bless you. Love you guys.